Well, for some insights into this uh, gathering, we're now joined uh, by Dr. Adetunji uh, Ogunyemi, who's an economic historian, lawyer, public affairs analyst, and senior lecturer at the uh, Obafemi Awolowo University in Nigeria. And he's in the capital of Gambia, uh, Banjul. Thank you so much indeed for joining us, and welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, so uh, what are your initial thoughts about a gathering like this? Uh, it's not the first, it won't be the last, but we always ask the question, I guess, do, does much ever come out of these think tanks and these gatherings? Oh, I, I think it's actually high time that we begin to domesticate within Africa thoughts, decisions, and deliberations uh, dealing with the continent uh, rather than host them outside of the continent. Uh, it's also very uh, opposite, very correct to have an African orientation and an African direction. I dare to say an African perspective to African problems. And if Africans have gathered together in Dakar, the capital of Senegal, to interrogate issues dealing with their development, I think it is perfectly in order. All right, let's talk about what possibly could be done. What can Africa do for itself? Um, a lot of our countries are struggling under the weight of debt um, from other nations, other institutions beyond our continent. Uh, I, I think um, the issues of debt, if you like, indebtedness, um, as well as corruption, uh, the issue that has to do with political instability, crises within the system in respect of conflict. There are diverse conflict uh, sports in Africa. Nigeria, for example, you have them in the Casamans in Senegal. Uh, you also have issues uh, dealing with uh, some uh, militant groups in Uganda and in some other parts of Africa. Uh, these are not issues that are beyond the capacity of Africans to interrogate uh, and to solve. But the problem has come to the area of our financial capacity uh, to instigate those moves that will free our people from poverty and want. And I think it's high time we started doing those things that we actually liberate the energies of the youth uh, to um, appropriate the advantages available to them by the natural resources in Africa uh, for their own development. So apart from our political instability issues, I think the next most important issue that we need to do deal with in Africa, and indeed, of course, in West Africa, uh, is uh, economic development and the creation of jobs for the youth. Again, these things are not... <laughs> Uh, this isn't, you know, kind of revelatory things that you're saying. We've known these things and we know perhaps what's required. Um, maybe is it a question of political will that's been lacking in the past? Because we have intelligent people who end up actually working in these global institutions from Africa that could come back and fix all of this. I think it has to do more with um, two factors. Uh, the first being lack of political will, as you have rightly suggested. And the second is the usual of political interference from outside of the continent. There are some countries in Africa uh, that still feel that the apron string with which they were attached to their former colonial masters uh, should continue to be so. Um, therefore, they are a little reticent to suggestions that are indigenously grown uh, within Africa, and they seek to adopt, rather than adapt, European solutions to peculiar African problems. I think it, it has to do more with these two factors, uh, lack of political will and unbridled political interference from outside of the continent. What do you think we can do quite quickly that might have huge impact in terms of starting to look more inwards and having fundamental change? I think it's high time we uh, began to do 
four things. The first is the issue that has to do with allowing the private sector to have a significant say and investment uh, in the development of the continent. That's the first. Uh, for example, private capital is extremely needed uh, in the areas of uh, designing of bankable projects, bankable projects for the development of infrastructure uh, within Africa. And this can be done and financed by the African Development Bank uh, with its other development partners from, uh, from outside, including the International Finance Corporation. Uh, they could help to do in this, to, to, help, to help to develop in this area. And then the second issue is we have to do with the digitizing the African economy. I know the issue of infrastructure may be an attenuating circumstance, uh, restricting this, but we can gradually, with a step one before the other, uh, help to digitize our economy. The reason is that this is the area that the youth, the teeming youth, most of whom are jobless, uh, can participate and be included within the economy. And then there's the issue of having to leverage on the advantages uh, given unto us by nature in terms of uh, our ecology. We need to do something about making our economy and our environment more green, much, much greener uh, than we have been doing before. And of course, uh, it is not out of place if we begin to focus uh, our development more now in the areas uh, that has to do with the uh, small, medium, and uh, micro enterprises. Uh, small, medium, and micro enterprises. Where women are more uh, in number and where they could be more included in the development enterprise and the buy in in the African development projects. I think this will be uh, more important. Uh, people often talk about. Um regional integration as being the key to uh, some of these issues and if you can do it in a region then it's much easier to build these regional blocks and have a, a continental wide uh, a solution. But let's take a look at ECOWAS for example and, and I look at this and it's a great grouping for many things but the fortunes of the countries in, in this grouping are so different that some might think they might not as well be part of this, this grouping. Um, you know, it, it's hard to compare Senegal to Burkina Faso, for example. Yes. Yes, um, but the, the languages never say die. I mean, we, we still have our peculiar problems. Yes, we do have our problems, and, but we must solve them. And indigenously grown solutions are better. Uh, than externally directed uh, suggestive solutions. Uh, take, for instance, in West Africa, there are 16 countries there, uh, nine of which uh, were former French colonies. And these feel more closely knit uh, amongst themselves uh, than they would, for example, uh, be relating with the former English-speaking countries, uh, which are four. And of course, Liberia also english -speaking but of course, uh, not within the Commonwealth. So the dichotomy and the differences that they, that have been bestowed upon them as a result of their colonial um, polarity, if you like, is such that solidarity and common decisions uh, taken to develop infrastructures across the board uh, have been lacking. For example, the West African superhighway from Nigeria, cutting through by the Republic, through La Côte d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, and then uh, terminating in Dakar. Uh, you would have thought that a road like that, or a rail line like that, cutting through uh, not less than 11 countries in West Africa, would be a priority. Uh, the problem has always been the unequal uh, financial and economic capacity of the countries there, but more as a result of their feeling more aligned to their former colonial masters, particularly the French speaking, uh, than uh, mm. indigenously developed uh, development agendas. So would the solution be, I think you've sort of hinted part of it, that um, we have our own institutions and big ones that uh, supply capital uh, on the continent to countries on the continent at perhaps more favorable interest rates and repayment terms? 
exactly. And that is the Africa Development Bank. That's number one. Even under the ECOWAS, under the Lagos Protocol, uh, the West African countries, uh, 16 of them, have their you know, have peculiar opportunities created within that protocol to assess funds or at least create a common market and go further from that to create a common currency called the EQ. Um, I, I will not bore you with the politics of EQ, but the truth of the matter is that the time has come for African countries, especially within West Africa, uh, to do away with the politics of uh, polarity and embrace more the issues that has to do with monetary union, uh, common currency, common custom union, the elimination of uh, restrictive tariff barriers amongst them, and then assess funds from the African Development Fund, uh, the African Development Bank, to build basic infrastructure, particularly infrastructure relating to roads, to electricity, and of course the creation of uh, dams and irrigation projects. This is very key to their development. All right, so Dr. Uh, Ten uh, uh, Ogunye, me, thank you so much indeed for joining us. We're going to have to leave it there, and that's uh, uh, Dr. Atenjun Adetunji. Ogonyemi, who is the economic historian, lawyer, and public affairs analyst and senior lecturer at the Obafemi Awololo University. Thank you so much.